This lecture will focus on exploring the depths of the historian John Jeffrey Martin's ideas on how personal identity relates to our external world. In particular, we will be considering his ideas from his book, Myths of Renaissance Individualism. Martin's argument primarily revolves around the intricate relationship between one's inner experience and their external encounters. To put it simply, who we are internally is significantly influenced by our interaction with the world outside. He argues that the Renaissance, quote unquote, self was not a quote unquote thing, but a collection of relationships between the internal and the external experiences of the individual. Early modern men and women view their identities as an array of quote unquote, possible permutations. In essence, the self served as a flexible intermediary between the in, an individual's interior and the social network surrounding them. Therefore, Martin is challenging the, the Burkhard, Burkhardian and Green Blatten positions from our prior lecture. Martin reminds the reader that Burkhardt's The Civilization of the Renaissance in Italy contends that early modern persons perceive themselves, unlike their medieval counterparts, as spiritual individuals, distinctly separate from social groups. From Renaissance self-fashioning, the author notes that Stephen Greenblatt suggested that expressive individuals did not populate the Renaissance, rather individuals existed as quote-unquote cultural artifacts that were fashioned by social institutions. Martin calls these myths. <laughs> Rather, he believes that, open quote, identity was not about individuality, but rather explicitly about the problem of the relationship of one's inner experience to one's experience in the world, close quote. These are nuances compounding upon nuances, but this is an ideal situation. We are all very complicated individuals, and I believe it is helpful to consider just how fragmented and integrated at the same time our lives are. It's all quite beautiful, the intricacies of personal lives. Now, how might we use Martin's ideas in our own lives? The first approach is to apply Martin's ideas to the formation of identity can be termed as the intersectional approach. This approach considers identity as an amalgamation of different roles and expectations that come from various societal factors, such as gender, race, socioeconomic status, and so forth. Through the lens, this lens, our identity is a crossroad, forever shaped by the traffic ideas and influences and experiences that travel from the external world into our psyche. For instance, a person who identifies as a female, a Latina, a scientist, and a mother simultaneously pros, uh, possesses all of these aspects and shaping her self-identity. The second approach is the adaptive approach. This approach suggests that identity isn't fixed, but instead involves and adapts over time based off the external circumstances. It posits that identity is a dynamic and fluid concept that changes as a response to the challenges and transformations we face in life. Take for instance, someone who grew up in a war-torn country might develop a resilient and resourceful identity out of necessity. And the third and final approach we'll explore is the authenticity approach. This approach is fundamentally rooted in the idea that one must strive to stay true to their inner self while navigating the complex interplay between the self and the world. As Martin asserts, open quote, in the theater of life, authenticity is the most challenging role to play, yet it is the most rewarding, close quote. In this sense, despite societal pressures and expectations, it is essential for one to be genuine to their core identity and values. Yet this pursuit of authenticity can often lead to an internal struggle as individuals grapple with balancing societal expectations and their inner truths. The tension that arises can lead to cognitive dissonance, feelings of unease and conflict with one, within oneself. This is a common challenge in the modern world where societal norms and expectations often conflict with personal values and aspirations. 
Each approach provides unique perspectives on the formation of personal identity, yet all three converge on a shared understanding that our identities are neither solely shaped by your inner self nor entirely molded by external factors. Rather, they emerge from complex, uh, the complex interplay between the inner and outer worlds, a dynamic process that requires constant negotiation, adaptation, and introspection. In conclusion, Martin's perspective encourages us as to view identity not merely as a static construct derived from the self-introspection, but as a dynamic process shaped by our interaction with the world around us. It calls for a deeper understanding of the forces that mold us and the courage to reconcile our inner authenticity with external expectations. As we navigate through this world, we must remember that our identities are not just a product of our inner selves, but also a reflection of the world in which we live. Thank you.